As we approach a beef carcass class, we're going to look at, th again, the three primary components. We're going to look at quality, muscling, and trimness. Always go back to that. Now, when we evaluate quality, just like we've talked about in other quality classes, which beef carcasses is one of those, uh, just like the rib and the wholesale loin, beef carcasses is also a quality cut. Because it's a quality cut, because it has the ribeye that we grade the carcass presented, we're going to use that to evaluate the quality of the cut. We're going to look at the amount of marbling in the ribeye. Also, we'll look at color, texture, and firmness to evaluate quality. What we want to do first is we want to evaluate the quality grade. First of all, we'll make sure that it's an A maturity carcass, that the, all the chine buttons are white and soft, uh, that there is not an animal that would be B or C or D or E maturity. Very rarely do we put those in the class, but it, there has been a few that have been placed over the years in a class, particularly B maturity carcasses. Just look and make sure that it's all A maturity carcasses first. Then evaluate the marbling score for quality grade. And we'll use the same cards that we use to evaluate quality that USDA uses. We'll use and look at this card. This is the minimum amount of marbling for the USDA prime grade. So we'll have that picture fixed in our minds so we can determine if any of the exhibits would fit in the prime grade. Then also we're going to have this picture fixed in our mind. This is a moderate amount of marbling and a modest amount of marbling. If a carcass has one of those two degrees of marbling, then that carcass would be top choice if it was a maturity, of course. Then also we're going to evaluate, is it top choice or is it regular choice? And we'll know, have this picture in our mind, which is a small amount of marbling. And so if this has somewhere between this amount of marbling and what we might see for modest, then it is a low choice carcass. And then finally, we'll have this picture set in our mind, which would be a USDA select carcass. This is a slight amount of marbling. If it has less than this, we would call that degree of marbling traces or practically devoid and that would be a USDA standard carcass and remember we've talked about how USDA standard carcasses generally go to the bottom of the class. So we will evaluate these carcasses for those four, five categories, prime, top choice, low choice, select and standard. As we look at that we'll use that as a very important criteria when we place the class. Next, we're going to evaluate the trimness and muscling of the class. And I would encourage you to go ahead and try to attempt to determine which one has the best or superior yield grade. Yield grade is an estimate of the leanness of the carcass and the muscularity of the carcass. And which one has the poorest yield grade? The poorest yield grade would be the fatter, lighter muscle carcasses. Yield grade one, of course, is the best and yield grade five is the worst. To do that, we have to, first of all, we make one assumption with beef carcass classes and that all exhibits weigh the same. If they all weigh the same, then we'll be able to evaluate those cuts for the amount of fat opposite the eye, the size of the ribeye, and kidney, pelvic, and heart fat, and just use those three criteria to determine an overall yield grade. And as you evaluate these carcasses for yield grade, you're going to, first of all, take a measurement opposite the ribeye, the 12th, 13th rib cross section we call the 12th rib fat. You're going to go from the bottom of the ribeye to the top three quarters of the way up and take a measurement at that point. This particular ribeye has a measurement of fat of 7 tenths. On this one, if we made that same measurement, it would be about 3 tenths. Now there's a scale that I would encourage you to look at and it's presented here on the screen. And if you look at a carcass that has no fat at all, starts out at a preliminary yield grade or a starting yield grade of a yield grade two. And every four tenths increase, you'll notice that there's one full yield grade, grade, yield grade increase. For, so a carcass that has four tenths of an inch of fat would be a yield grade 3.0. Now these two carcasses, this carcass we said had seven tenths, and so it would have a preliminary yield grade of 3.75. This carcass had three tenths of an inch of fat. It would have a preliminary yield grade or starting yield grade of 2.75. Just by doing that alone, you'll get a rough idea of the yield grade differences in those carcasses. I would also encourage you, though, to look at two of the other main factors that we look at in yield grade, and that is the size of the ribeye muscle itself. About every inch difference in ribeye size between the two exhibits 
there's about a third of a yield grade difference. So, for example, if this ribeye was one full inch greater, as you looked at it, about an inch greater, you thought, then this one had, would have a superior, uh, increase the yield grade, or adjust that preliminary yield grade by 0.33, or a third of a yield grade. So you'll look at muscularity, and also you look at kidney, pelvic, and heart fat in the carcass. That is the fat that surrounds the kidney, the fat in the pelvic region, and the fat in the heart region, and you'll evaluate that amount of fats. So I encourage you to yield grade those three carcasses. That is a good starting place to evaluate the overall muscularity and the trendness of the carcass. Now next, in addition to looking at, we've talked about quality grade, but you want to look more at the rest of the carcass with respect to trimness and, mu and muscling. You want to look at more of the carcass, not just this ribeye. This ribeye is supposed to give us a representation of the entire carcass, but you have the whole carcass there. So you need to look at all the other regions of the carcass and ask yourself, do, does what I see here at this 12th rib cross section represent what I see in the rest of the carcass? The amount of fat measured here is supposed to be a representation of the total carcass fatness. The size of the ribeye muscle is supposed to be a representation of the total muscularity of the carcass. I would encourage you to work uh, as you approach a class to first of all look at those two measurements, look at this measurement for fat, this measurement for muscularity. But for example, for fat, after I looked at that one measurement, then I would start from the top, the round, and work my way down on every exhibit and make a comparison. Compare the amount of fat over the rounds. Look at the blueness or the purpleness that's over the round itself. As more fat is built up, you'll see less of that blueness, less of that purple color on the outside surface of the cut. Then you'll look in the rump region and the loin edge region. You'll look over the plate and then finally over the clod. Then you'll turn to the inside of the carcass and you'll look at the amount of fat over the inside round in the cod udder region. If it's a steer, it's cod fat. If it's a heifer, it's udder fat. Then you'll look at the fat in the brisket area down below. Again, notice that the first thing I did is I looked at fat here at the 12th rib cross section, and then I looked at the fat starting from the round down to the chuck over regions. So I'll make a comparison between all exhibits over the round. Then I'll move down to the loin, then the plate, then the clod. Then I'll look at the inside round of all of them. Then look over the cod udder region, then look over the briskets to evaluate overall fatness of the carcasses. Then you want to look at muscularity. You'll look at the size of the ribeye again first and then you'll start from the top and work your way down. You look at the plumpness, you look at the length width of the cut, the thickness of the round cushion, then you'll look at the plumpness of the back or of the loin region, of the rib region, and the muscularity of the plumpness and bulge in the clod region. So again, if you start from top to bottom, it helps you not miss any particular region of that carcass as you're making your evaluation. So you'll make that comparison. As you look at and approach a class, the, remember you say you quality grade and yield grade those carcasses. If you place it just strictly on quality and yield grade, quite often you're going to do very well in that class. But I would still encourage you to look at the rest of the carcasses to make sure, is what I'm seeing here from muscularity and, fat, uh, muscularity and fatness really representative of what I see in the rest of the carcass? 